Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students in our last class we discussed the first few experiments that classical mechanics could not explain and how quantum mechanics or some new ideas were necessary to explain those uh, experiments. Uh, in our discussion, we discussed talked about the black body radiation, how Max Planck could resolve the problem in black body radiation or resolve the problem of ultraviolet catastrophe by assuming uh, that the black body oscillators cannot have continuous energy rather they are their energies are quantized and how energy of these oscillators were proportional to the frequency uh, of, the, of the radiation that we are emitting. And in the second experiment of photoelectric effect we discussed how uh, Einstein could resolve the anomalies that were observed in photoelectric effect experiments vis a vis the existing knowledge in classical mechanics. Einstein had to suggest that the light which we all know as a, as a wave also has a particle like nature and the energy of light is what, what he called as photon are the packets of energy which is and the energy of this packet was proportional to the frequency of the light whereas the intensity of the light represented how many such packets or how many such photons are there in the source radiation. We will continue our discussion in yet another experiment, uh, experimental uh, results where we, saw, we would see that the existing knowledge in classical mechanics failed to explain the experimental observation and how new ideas were necessary to resolve the issue. Uh, the example that we are going to discuss today is the hydrogen atom emission spectra. If you uh, look at the hydrogen atoms emission spectra as is shown here, you would see that the, uh, the spectra shows several lines followed by some bands and then there are some empty spaces and then it gets repeated. For example, some more lines appear and then a band and some empty space and some more and it continues. The radiation, the uh, emission spectra ranged between UV visible and infrared range. We uh, know from our uh, pre uh, previous and, uh, classes that the emission spectra of hydrogen atom could be explained or at least numerically explained uh, by different spectroscopies Lyman, Balmer, Paschen, uh, Bracket and so on. So, therefore, we have this, uh, this series of lines are called Lyman series, this is Balmer series, Paschen, Bracket and so on and so forth. And we also know that all these uh, observations could be explained together by Rydberg by a single equation. However, these explanations lacked a, uh, a fundamental understanding uh, of the problem. They could reproduce the experimental observation as in merely numerical exercise, but we did not learn anything new about the system. So, this particular problem was uh, taken up by Niels Bohr uh, and Bohr proposed his uh, Bohr's uh, atomic model. In Bohr's atomic model, Bohr uh, assumed uh, a few, few few things. First of all, he suggested that an electron in in a, in, a, in, a at, in an atom goes around the nucleus in a fixed orbit. way of radius r. And the second assumption that he uh, made is that the angular momentum of this orbiting electron which is given by m v r, so m is the mass of the electron, v is the speed at which it is uh, orbiting and r is the radius of this fixed orbit r. m v r the angular momentum of this orbiting electron is integer multi multiple of h by 2 pi, where h is again the Planck's constant 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 uh, joule second. With these two assumption, Niels Bohr did a few more exercises and then came to uh, the, the, the conclusion that the radius r 
was proportional to n square where again this n can be 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, these are the integral multiples. Radius, uh, the radius of this fixed orbit r is proportional to n square and the total energy of, of this uh, of the of this of, of different radius or the different orbits is 1 over n, n square. So, these are the outcomes that came out by making these two assumptions. Uh, it is very important to uh, discuss about this assumption because you see that uh, in black body radiation we, we uh, Max Planck suggested that the energy of the black body oscillators are quantized. In photoelectric effect Einstein suggested that the energy of radiation energy of light is, is quantized. Now, in this experiment Niels Bohr is suggesting that the angular momentum of the angular momentum of the orbiting electron is quantized. What it uh, means? It says that the electron when it orbits around the nucleus in an atom, it cannot occupy any uh, radius rather its radius is quantized, it can have it has n, n dependence. The electron while orbiting the uh, nucleus cannot have any or any continuous value of angular momentum rather it has discrete or quantized value of angular momentum. And similarly, the energy of the electron when it is orbiting the nucleus, it cannot have any continuous value of energy rather it has got some discrete value of energy or quantized values of energy. So, this principle of quantization or the dependence of physical observables like radius, angular momentum, energy, the dependence on n the integers is coming out from one after another experiment. So, when I when we disc, when we look at this that the energy levels of hydrogen atom are quantized, then we see that uh, this is where uh, this is this is the energy level that comes out of uh, Bohr's atomic model. We see that there are different energy levels and the cyst, the electron jumps from one higher energy level to a lower energy level and emits that radiation and that radiation is what uh, we see in, in the hydrogen atoms emission spectra. This model could explain why we have some lines well spaced separated lines followed by some bands and then some empty spaces because this model clearly shows that elect since the energy of the orbiting electron is, is quantized. So, therefore, from one orbit to another orbit when the electron makes a jump the energy that comes out of this, this process is also quantized. You cannot expect all possible uh, energy values to be uh, emitted by the by the hydrogen atoms electron rather you are expecting based on these laws you are expecting that only certain values of energy that is are going to be observed and this is what is being observed in this hydrogen atoms emission spectrum. Bohr's atomic model could explain the hydrogen atoms emission spectrum very well. However, it could not explain a few other things, few other related things. For example, the emission spectra of all heavier atoms could not be explained by Bohr's atomic model. Not only that, even for hydrogen atoms emission spectra, if you subject the hydrogen atom to external electric field or magnetic field, the Bohr's model could not explain the emission spectra of hydrogen atom in the presence of external electric and magnetic field. Because you would see in our next discussion that the two assumptions that here uh, Bohr has made in his Bohr's atomic model have some flaws and we will discover that what are these flaws and then we will be able to tell why Bohr's atomic model could not explain the emission spectra of heavier elements as well as hydrogen atoms emission spectra in the presence of electric and magnetic field. But before that we would discuss not another experiment rather another theoretical idea that changed our understanding of physics forever. This was proposed by a young physicist De Broglie. 
In photoelectric, while explaining photoelectric effect experiments, Einstein suggested that light which we all know as a wave has got particle like nature. Now, de Broglie's hypothesis suggests that any particle that we see that we observe has got a wave like nature. So, Einstein for suggested that light which is a wave has particle like nature. Now, de Broglie is suggesting the other way around that all particles have wave like properties. So, if the particles that we know that we can see in our microscopic world have wave like properties, then what are their wavelengths? So, de Broglie had an answer to that. De Broglie suggested that, that a, a particle with mass m and moving in a speed of v or that means, which has got a momentum of p is associated with a wavelength lambda, which is given by lambda is h divided by p, where p is the momentum of this particle and we can also write h by m v, where mass is m is the mass of the particle and v is its uh, speed of velocity. Now, again one more thing that you must be noticing is that h the Planck's constant again appears in, uh, in de Broglie's hypothesis. So, this was rather perplexing for, for many reasons because we always knew that it, it is it was very hard for us to uh, imagine that the everyday objects that we uh, see uh, for example, a pen or a book which has a fixed mass or move, moving at a particular speed v would be actually not a particle, but, but which, which is of course, a particle, but also has got a wave like nature. But this is not hard to imagine or hard to understand, because when you look at this particular equation, you see that the wavelength of this particle is inversely proportional to the mass of the particle. The everyday macroscopic object that we deal with or that we encounter have got very high mass. So, since they have got very high mass, the de Broglie's de Broglie wavelength lambda corresponding to these objects are very small. So, therefore, even if they have wave like property for all practical purposes, those wave like properties are not observable or we are not able to observe them. However, when you go to microscopic world, when you talk about subatomic particles like electrons, where mass is very small, in that case the de Broglie's wavelength becomes considerably large. So, therefore, in such microscopic uh, particles, you cannot ignore the wave like nature of the particle. So, Einstein suggested that light, which is a wave which was known as well known as wave has particle like nature. And now, de Broglie suge is suggesting that for example, electron which is which was known to be a particle has got wave like nature. Now, this brings forth to what is called as wave particle duality that a particle can behave like a wave and a wave can behave like a particle. This wave particle duality leads to further interesting ideas, but one more uh, interesting thing that comes out of de Broglie's hypothesis is that it provides a support to Bohr's atomic model or the assumption that Niels Bohr made in his atomic model. This we will discuss next. For example, uh, if you remember uh, Bohr, Niels Bohr assumed that the angular momentum of the orbiting electron is quantized m v r he suggested was equal to n h divided by 2 pi. Now, let us look suppose this is an electron which is going around the nucleus in a fixed orbit of radius r. If since this uh, electron has a particular mass m it has got an associated de Broglie wavelength. If this wavelength of this uh, uh, de Broglie wavelength of this electron is something uh, that, that can fit the perimeter of the uh, Bohr's orbit that it is orbiting, then you can see that no matter how many times it orbits this uh, goes around this orbit, there will be a constructive interference. That means, there will be always an in phase and, and the system would be stable. But suppose, if the perimeter of the orbit does not match 
with the wavelength of the electron the de Broglie wavelength of the electron in that case you would see act actually an out of phase. So, once there is an out of phase uh, in, in the system you would see there will be a destructive interference and the system will collapse. So, what it suggests is that for a for a for an electron to be stable in a fixed orbit it should have uh, a de Broglie wavelength such that an integer number of lambdas the de Broglie wavelength will fit the perimeter of this uh, the, the circle that is uh, 2 pi r. So, now you we also know so lambda is our h by m v is 2 pi r and then we can rearrange this equation uh, m v r equals n h divided by 2 pi and this gives a justification to Bohr's assumption that the angular momentum of the part uh, the orbiting electron is quantized. So, de Broglie's hypothesis that the electron has a particular uh, which has a particular mass and moving with a particular speed has got a de Broglie wavelength and this de Broglie wavelength has to be such that n lambda equals 2 pi r and then only the electron will be stable in that orbiting nucleus otherwise it will develop an out of phase and this is the electron would never exist. So, if the electron is orbiting around a nuclear around the nucleus in a fixed orbit then it must satisfy that the angular momentum of this uh, orbiting electron is, is quantized. Now, as I have already mentioned that we have now come to a stage where we have this so called wave particle duality. Now, the particle behaves like a wave and the wave behaves like a particle. This gives rise to an interesting problem. Uh, suppose, suppose I would uh, I, I want to uh, determine the position of uh, an electron uh, with an accuracy of let us say uh, delta x. I want to see that whether the uh, an electron which has a particular mass whether it is present within this uh, range of space delta x. To do that what uh, experiment can I do? The one possible experiment is that I will allow electromagnetic radiation or light to interact with the, with the electron or I will shine light onto the electron and then look at the response. Now, if I want to determine the position of this electron with a precision of delta x. So, I must use a light of wavelength lambda which should be less than delta x. Now, if I want to determine the position of the electron precisely my delta x should be as small as I can get. So, if delta x is small to be able to make that precise measurement my lambda lambda of the incident radiation should be even smaller. But I know if the radiation lambda uh, radiation has got wavelength of lambda it has got very uh, and the lambda is very small for small lambda I have got extremely high momentum because remember the wave has a particle nature. So, the light that I am sending has if it has very low wavelength then it has got very high momentum. And the moment this light interacts with the matter or the electron since light is now a particle the electron is also a particle then, then there is a collision and in this collision there will be momentum transfer from light to electron because remember this light has low wavelength so therefore high momentum. Now, the large momentum that this light carries will be passed on to the to the electron. So, the very act of measurement through which I interact the it light with, with electron the very act of measurement of the position of electron influences the momentum of the electron. How? Because the collision of light and electron will lead to transfer of momentum from light to electron and therefore, electrons momentum will change. So, that means, if I want to measure the position of the electron precisely, 
I have to give up my hope in determining the momentum of the electron because the very act of measuring the position will compromise the result that I am getting out of uh, the, uh, regarding the momentum of the electron. Now, how do I resolve it? Of course, uh, if I do not want to disturb the momentum of the electron very much, one easy way is to give what? If they send the part the light which has low momentum. So, if I have small momentum, then the collision will lead to minimal transfer of momentum from light to electron. So, therefore, the electron's momentum will not change. Now, if I have to prepare a light or if you have to choose a light which has low momentum, small momentum, then I know that if p is small, then lambda is large. So, that means I have to choose a light source which has very large wavelength. Now, if I have chosen a very large wavelength, so the lambda, the wavelength must be less than the precision of my position experiment. So, if lambda is less, so that delta uh, sorry lambda is more, then delta x is even more, is even larger. So, in that case what happens? That the my precision of position measurement is getting compromised. So, that means if I want to measure the momentum of the electron precisely, I will have to give up my hopes in making the position measurement exact. So, I can choose whether I want to measure the position of the moment precisely, position of the electron precisely or whether I want to measure the momentum of the electron uh, precisely. I cannot do both. So, there is this inherent uncertainty in, in measurement. So, Heisenberg proposed this relation that delta x into delta p x, this is the uncertainty in the measurement of position, this is the uncertainty in the measurement of uh, momentum has to be greater than or equal to h bar by 2, where h bar is simply h divided by 2 pi. So, this is the uh, idea about uncertain Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that I can either me, uh, measure the position or I can measure the momentum precisely and not both. Now, we have we are well equipped to look at Niels Bohr's uh, atomic model and what, uh, what is one flaw that exists in that uh, atomic model. If you remember Bohr's atom atomic model said that the electrons go around in fixed orbit of radius r. So, that means Bohr assumed that he knows the precise value of r therefore, the position of the electron. In the second assumption he said that angular momentum of the particle is, is quantized m v r equals n h by n, n h bar. So, therefore, in two assumption what he did is that he said that I know the exact position of the electron as well as exact momentum of the electron and that is a strict no no in, in, in quantum mechanics because you cannot have precise knowledge about the position as well as the momentum of the particle. And that is the mistake in Bohr's atomic model which prevented the atomic model to be used in, in case of heavier elements and also to be able to explain the emission spectra of hydrogen atom in the presence of electric field and magnetic field. But when we consider the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle into our picture and have a real look at the problem, then in, a in future class we would show that we can explain both the experimental results of the uh, emission spectra of heavier elements as well as the experimental spectra of hydrogen atom in electric and, and in uh, magnetic field. Uh, these are some of the key exper experimental and theoretical uh, ideas that, that forced us to think that perhaps our understanding of class uh, the, the physical world is not complete and we lack some key features from, from our discussion. And this all these uh, this, uh, all these experimental and theoretical developments suggested that there exists a hidden world, the world of quantum mechanics that need to be that is uh, necessary for us to, to ex explore. Uh, Uh, next, uh, we would look at some of the key uh, milestones in the journey of quantum chemistry. So far, we what we have discussed is that the develop the uh, some some of the experiments that were that could not be explained through classical uh, physics, and we needed some new ideas such as 
quantization of energy, quantization of radius, quantization of angular momentum. Uh, then we also had duality wave particle duality the particles can have wave like nature the waves can have a particle like nature all these new interesting and uh, unprecedented ideas were used to describe some of the exper uh, uh, these experiments i would just take you through some of the important milestones in the journey of quantum chemistry and how it has become um, uh, so relevant in uh, today's uh, research in physics and in chemistry for example, uh, to begin with 1926 Schrodinger solved the hydrogen atom problem and soon after Hitler and uh, London provided an explanation as to of any chemical bond or the bonding in the smallest possible system hydrogen molecule. So, we cannot actually describe a chemical bond or we cannot talk about a chemical bond uh, complete uh, with, with uh, complete knowledge unless we invoke the principles of quantum mechanics. Uh, the journey continued by Slater and Pauling who showed the how chemical bonding occurs in heavier uh, molecules like nitrogen and oxygen. They introduced the concept of orbital hybridization followed by uh, soon after Huhn, Mulliken and Slater uh, they, they proposed the molecular orbital theory, the concept of electron delocalization. Uh, soon after uh, Hartree, uh, Slater and Gaunt uh, suggested this very useful self consistent field and the variational principle for self consistent field. Uh, in 1951 Ruthan provided a matrix formulation of Hattrick theory that made this theory very popular because around that time we are getting we are witnessing rapid progress in uh, computers and with the matrix formulation uh, it was it was becoming easier for us to deal uh, solve uh, complex quantum mechanical problem through through computers. Uh, Soon after, uh, after Popel and Cohn and Sham in 1960s and 70s uh, put forward two very important theories, the wave functional theories and density functional theories which are now two of the most commonly used quantum chemical uh, strategies to deal with uh, molecular system, large molecular system. And in 70s, Warshall and Levitt took quantum mechanics to uh, uh, even further height by introducing quantum mechanics to uh, in the field of biology. Uh, many of these names that I, uh, I uttered in this, uh, in this uh, lecture today ha uh, have received Nobel prizes uh, for, for their uh, seminal contribution. And in the rest of the course, we would actually uh, discuss more about quantum mechanics as you have seen that there are many new ideas that have been uh, put forwarded through in, in quantum mechanics and quantum mechanics has become a kind of a new language. Uh, as in any new language when you want to speak that language, when you want to communicate in that language you must know the grammar of it. And in next few classes what we would do is that we would discuss about this grammar of this uh, new language uh, of quantum mechanics. Thank you very much.